What's up guys, Jeff with Shock Surplus and we got another rebuild for you. This time we got a pair of Fox Factory Race Series 2.5 smooth body shocks. These are my own personal shocks and I'm gonna show you guys how to rebuild them. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is release all the nitrogen. When your nitrogen is released, you can then take your tool and remove the valve core. Now move that over to the vise where we are gonna work on getting the seal head and piston out. To shock in the vise, you can take a 332nd Allen and loosen the set screw, holding your shock end cap in place. Uh, with the set screw loosened, you can then remove the end cap. You're gonna wanna take a spanner wrench and loosen the, the end cap. In this case, this end cap was seized onto the shock body. So I had to actually take a pipe wrench to grip the, the end cap, you wanna make sure you're just grabbing the end cap because you don't wanna scratch the, the shock body. And a little bit of, of penetrating oil and a extension and I was able to get the end cap that was seized on off. But now that it's been broken off, we could take the spanner wrench and loosen it. All right, with the end cap loose, you can then just kinda twist that off and slide that up out of the way. You can kind of see here, uh, I've cleaned it up a bit, but this is where the sand cap was kind of rusted on, welded on. To get the, the snap ring out of the way, you're gonna wanna push down on your seal head. Push that down. And then you take your pliers and get that sir clip out of the way. You take a towel and clean off the inside a bit. You then slide the seal head and the piston assembly out. What happens is there's a, an O-ring that's on the seal head and that O-ring will sometimes get stuck right in here where the groove for the, the C-clip is. That does get stuck. There's a couple ways you can get around it. You could pump some air into your reservoir. That'll help push the seal head out. Or you can also take a rod, slide that in your shock eyelet and hammer that up. Once that seal has came over that groove, you can slide the rest of the assembly out pretty easily. On a, an older shock, fluid would be black. Um, this fluid is looks fresh just because we did rebuild it, but we wanted to make sure we rebuilt it on the camera for you guys. Let all that shock oil drain out so that when you put it on your table, you don't make an even bigger mess. The seal head out of the way, you could dump your oil in your oil bucket. To get that reservoir taken apart, because you you're gonna wanna take out the IFP um, and place the seals in there. Sometimes you could push it in the hand, but sometimes a hammer will help. Just knock this in place. And then there's a circlip in the reservoir that keeps the end cap in place. So you're gonna wanna take your pick, making sure not to scratch the inside of the reservoir. You take your um, end cap off. So there's a couple ways you could do it uh, with your with the valve core out of the valve, the Schrader valve. You could take some shop air, blow the air through here. That air will force this end cap out. Or we have this tool. Um, it's drilled. Uh, there's a, there's a little bleed hole there, so that when you have this screwed on. You could pull out the end cap and it won't create a vacuum. So with that on, slide that end cap out. So on, on these shocks, it does have a, a threaded uh, IFP. So you can take your IFP tool or if you have a quarter 20 piece of all thread, that works also. But you'd screw that into the end of the IFP. And then you can slide your IFP out. Now, when you're sliding the IFP out of the way, you kind of want to keep your re reservoir kind of angled up because there is going to be some fluid in the reservoir and you don't want that getting all over the place. There's your IFP and your wear band. 
I'm just gonna let that sit over the bucket, let all the oil drain out into there and work on the seals. This is all the working internals of your shock. So I'm just gonna clean everything off, wipe everything off. Now to take your, your piston assembly apart, you're gonna take a 19 millimeter or three quarter inch uh, socket and you go ahead and zip this off. And so this is this step is, is super important. You go you're going to want to take everything off in a way that you can remember that it'll all go back in the same way you took it off. So what I like to do is I will um, take them off and put them in a line of the way that they came off. When you're putting the shims out, you want to make sure. Uh, that you are only having one shim. Uh, what happens with the shock fluid is it'll kind of cause the the shims to, to kind of stick together. When it comes to placing the, pist the piston down, um, since the piston was this way on the shock, I'm gonna put it that way on the table. Then your seal head. And your anchor. At this point, I'm going to look at the shock shaft, inspect it for any uh, pitting or any burrs. Uh, you want your shock shaft to be nice and smooth. Um, any burrs uh, will cause rips and tears um, on your, in your seals as it's going through the, the travel. If you have burrs here, those burrs will cut up the inside of your um, seal head, your oil seals. This is your seal head assembly. This is what keeps, this is gonna be your main um, assembly that keeps all the shock fluid in your shock. Uh, there's gonna be three seals that we're gonna replace. This uh, outside seal, this um, oil seal and then there is another o-ring in here so you're going to want to remove the seals and lay them out in the table this main oil seal has a direction you want to make sure you remove when you remove it you're putting it in a way in the same orientation that you removed it so that you know which way it goes back in if you don't remember how the seal was you want to make sure the the U-cup, uh, if you have your seal head this way, you want to make sure that U-cup is goes in towards the seal and this lip kind of goes um, towards the outside of the seal head. And then your final seal on the inside. Again, you want to make sure you're being careful not to scratch inside of the seal head with your O-ring pick. Use some parts cleaner, clean out the seal head. Take your air, blow it all out. You wanna make sure that this bushing is in good shape. Um, in this case, it is. If you see scratches or if you see some of that material, um, that is, if the material is rubbed off, you wanna make sure, or you wanna either replace your seal head assembly or you can also just replace just this bushing. Also check to make sure that this uh, top out bumper is in good shape. In this case, it is. So we're just gonna go ahead and replace the seals. I'm gonna be using this Fox seal kit. To make sure I don't mix up the new seals with the old seals, I'm just gonna put the seals over here off to the side and use the old seals as a guide for what seals to grab from the, the seal kit to put on the seal head. Seals that I did remove, these are the uh, Viton seals. I'm just gonna be replacing them with the, with the Buna seals because I didn't have any Viton seals and since these are my own set of shocks, doesn't matter to me too much. But the Viton seals uh, are better resistant to heat. You take your seals and make sure they match up with the old seals. I'm gonna take some assembly grease. Uh, you don't need a lot, put a very light coating in it and then slide that in there. And then there's gonna be two O-rings that look very similar. You have your 
o-ring that looks like a or your u-cup o-ring and then this is going to be your wiper seal make sure you use the right seal for wherever it's going into your seal head uses the u-cup and your end cap is going to use this harder rubber dust seal. And then you're gonna take your, your U-cup and you're gonna slide that into its groove. And make sure that's nice and flush in there. And then you got one more O-ring on the outside. Again, make sure the size works. Little bit of grease. And then slide that off the side or slide that onto the uh, seal head put this aside because that's put together and take your three o-rings that you're using for reference and toss them toss them in the trash you want to make sure you don't mix up your new seals or your new o-rings with your old o-rings with the seal head done i'm going to change out the o-ring in the ifp you just pinch the o-ring and slide that off on your IFP, uh, it was kind of hard to see it in the um, earlier in the video, but this is the threaded portion of the IFP. Um, this is a quarter inch, uh, quarter twenty thread. So again, if you don't have that nice IFP tool, you just take a piece, long piece of all thread, quarter twenty, screw that in there, pull that IFP out. Then we're gonna go ahead and uh, clean off the uh, the O ring, and we're gonna match up O rings again. Make sure they're the right size. Take some assembly grease. A neat little trick also is your new O-rings will have some kind of a mark on them. That's kind of how you can tell that it's a new seal. Slide that onto your IFP. Last two O-rings are going to be on your reservoir end cap. So you can pull those two out. and then match them up with the O-rings in your kit. Make sure they're the same size. Here are those two dots again, letting you know that these are the new ones. These are the old ones. Just a little bit of grease. Lube these bad boys up, slide that on. Final seal is going to be your, your dust wiper. The dust wiper is located on your end cap. You can see this one is pretty beat up because we did take a, uh, a pipe wrench to it to get it off because this was seized on again. But if this was customer shock, we would be just replacing it with a new end cap. To get the, the dust wiper seal out, you take your pick, clean off all the gunk around the seal, and take your dust wiper, slide that into the groove. It does help to, to get a small screwdriver, any kind of a tool really. You use that to push the, the seal in the rest of the way. Before getting everything on, I like to use this little bullet tool. It slides over on the shaft. So when you're sliding your um, seal head, your end cap in place, it just creates a smoother transition so that you're not uh, accidentally ripping the seals, especially up here, your circlip, and then your seal head assembly. So now we're gonna get the, the piston and the shims back on, write down the diameters and the thickness of the shims so that you have reference. I did take apart the other shock already, uh, so I'm just gonna use what I wrote down here as a reference as I'm cleaning these shims. Now with the shims in place, we could go ahead and slide your spacer on there and just put everything back in the way you took them off. Socket, tighten that down, 35, 40 foot pounds. With this all put together, you're ready to bleed your shock body. So we're gonna take this back to the table and make sure we clean off as much of the old oil as we can. Clamp your rag. <clears throat> and then just clean out your shock body, or your reservoir. Are right, you gonna do the same thing on your shock body. Shock body all clean, you wanna Inspect it, make sure it's all nice and smooth. Then we can take this back to the vise to fill the shock 
first thing that I like to do is I'll fill the reservoir and keep the reservoir up this way and fill the fluid all the way. You take your IFP, slide that on. Make sure you get your wear band. You can slide that IFP down past that circlip groove. Make sure that you're pushing this down as straight as possible. With your internal floating piston in the reservoir, you want the reservoir to hang down lower than the shock body. You have your IFP down here. This reservoir is full of fluid. So if there's any bubbles trapped in the reservoir, that's gonna be moved up to the top. What you do to help the, the bubbles that are stuck is tap reservoir to break loose any of the bubbles that might be in there. I'm gonna use this hammer and I'm gonna push the IFP up. That's going to do is it's gonna push any air that was in here through the valving, um, through the reservoir hose, and up here through the shock body and just push clean fluid all the way through the system. We're gonna push this through. And now I know that there's no, there shouldn't be any fluid stuck in the valving on the knobs, stuck in the hose because I pushed all that fluid and air through. Checking your shock body fluid right now is up to about here. Now we're just gonna take some more shock fluid, pour that in, make sure you're not pouring in too much. I'm gonna fill it to about right here. Then we could take our piston assembly. Slide that on. We're slowly just gonna cycle the piston through the fluid, getting any air bubbles out. <clears throat> you wanna make sure to do this slowly. Once you've gotten to the point where there's no longer any air bubbles in the system, on your seal head assembly, there's this little machine groove. What that groove is for is so that when you slide the seal head down, you get fluid will bleed out of it. What you do want is there to be fluid to come out. So if you don't have any fluid coming out of the bleed holes, then you can just slide your seal head assembly up. Add a little bit more fluid. And what this is making sure of is that you get a proper bleed or no bubbles in the system. Slide that seal head down past your groove. Clean off any excess fluid. You then take your snap ring pliers and pop the snap ring back into its home. Get a ruler, check the IFP depth, make sure that's in spec. And then we can take your reservoir end cap, press that in. Get that past the groove. And then take your circlip, slide that circlip in place. With the end cap in place, we can take the valve core and screw that puppy in. We are then going to put in some nitrogen. Now these shocks are gonna get filled to 200. So what I like to do is I'll overcharge it. Make sure that um, there's no leaking and there's no leaking of nitrogen. For the sake of the video, we're just gonna slide that end cap on, screw that back onto your seal head. Take your span wrench, tighten that down. Take your Allen keys, tighten your set screw, and you've rebuilt your shock. Now, if you guys have any questions about rebuilding your own shocks, if you need seals, or you want us to rebuild them, hit us up, shocksurplus.com.